YouTube, what is up with y'all today? This is Neil Goodfella, Goodfella Neil coming through with a quick talk video. And basically, um, it's basically the topic about um, how to start a sneaker collection. Now, I actually did how to start a sneaker collection in like 2015. That's still on my channel. Yes, you can see a younger Neil, a younger Goodfella Neil on there, man, just a few years younger. So, uh, with this one, I'm going to just do uh, my top five and uh, for 2019, you know, building a sneaker collection, shit, like four or five years ago is completely different from building a collection now in 2019. With 2019, uh, here already, you know, things fall a little bit more in our favor and things change and with this whole you know everybody trying to resell sneakers and all that stuff actually that plays more into your to uh, an advantage in 2019 than it did in 2015 so you know obviously if you've been in the game for the past what almost five years even just the past five years you already seen a difference and I've been in the game since that I've been actually collecting collecting as an adult was probably like uh, uh maybe like summer to fall of 2010 so i kind of seen when stuff was still kind of somewhat underground and then it just kind of like sparked and stuff because i remember when jordan's was still like 150 and then it was still discount to 130 127 and all that stuff you know so um yeah man it's just it's like at least these kind of videos would probably need to be made like every i'll say probably every three to five years um maybe at the quickest every two years uh, but not too much change to the point because the principle is still the same but the climate change but anyway let me jump into these uh numbers again i'm gonna do my this is my top five ways to start a sneaker collection in 2019 to start a sneaker collection okay now how to i don't know about the growing you know i guess that would kind of be a different topic but this is like a regular person um maybe 20 years old 18 years old now you don't i know you know you don't really too much like have a budget or i mean well you do have a budget but you know what i mean i know this is taking into account that that person doesn't make a lot of money okay like because i didn't make a lot of money at 18 or 20 or nothing like that so like you know buying a 200 dollars shoe is kind of a, like a big deal you know what i mean like um because you know that could possibly be half if not all of somebody check at that age depending on what because at that time obviously you're not working like, in, like no crazy good job yet you probably still just graduated um high school or whatever or uh you start in college or some people hey still in high school shit if you can still manage to get kicks in you and you can get your money together great now these kind of purchases will be basically just for um budget amount we say 150 at the most but under 150 basically right and we know realistically a lot of the hype stuff is more than that so number one you have to enjoy the hunt for sneakers man if you don't enjoy the hunt for sneakers and i actually wrote my little document i mean i actually wrote the the stuff down too i'm not freestyling it uh <laughs> this video but number one is you definitely have to enjoy the hunt if you don't, if like if you don't enjoy the hunt, you definitely gonna hate collecting sneakers. Like one of the things I always tell everybody, that's one of the essential skills that you need is the hunt. Like your hunting skills, and what I mean by your hunting skills is like how do you go about finding the sneakers that's actually affordable. Um, it's not as hard today in 2019 as it was in 2015. It was a little bit more harder or whatever, because StockX wasn't as prominent and GOAT and all that stuff. Um, I think stock has might have been around, but it might have still been a baby then. But I remember Wale talking about it. They used to show little StockX commercials on YouTube but um, every now and then. But now, StockX is like this big prominent force that like you know like for sure. It's damn near like the stock market for sneakers. Um, you can also still go to eBay. Now, depending if you ain't getting no crazy expensive like sought after kick, you don't really too much worry about have to like check in for fakes and stuff like that. So... Um, check the outlet stores, comb the sales and clearance rack, online, offline, stock X, GOAT, 
um, you probably might have a little bit more chance with GOAT since um, you actually, uh, since they actually do have pre-owned sneakers. And sometimes on GOAT, sometimes the deals might be slightly better. And obviously on StockX, all the shoes brand new. So if you want a DS shoe, it's a good chance you're going to be paying top tier price for that kind of sneaker. Um, the only way it will fall in your favor is because there's more resellers cutting each other on these platforms that will actually give you the better deal. So with all that being said, it's more of a buyer's market now when you're hunting for sneakers. So in 2019, since it's more of a buyer's market, being a buyer of sneakers, everything falls more so in your favor versus how it was in 2015 where, you know, we still couldn't get anything. But like once those prices stuck that when the reseller got it, like those was the boom year from 2013, 2014, like those resellers, like once you got something back then or whatever, 2015, 2016, um, once you actually got a sneaker, it stayed up there. Sometimes they might restock, but now in 2019, they restock more often, even if you can't get the kickoff goat or whatever. I don't want this video to be too long, but yeah. So number one is enjoy the hunt. Enjoy the hunt. Uh, sign up. For uh, number two is sign up for the uh, sign up for the sneaker reward programs. And the reason I say this is because you're gonna be buying a lot more a lot more sneakers from these stores like the Finish Line, the Foot Locker. Um, a lot of these stores got reward programs, so it's like you might as well uh, stack points and get those discounts um, or, or perks and rewards that they offer because you're going to be buying more sneakers from these stores most likely. Um, than a regular person. Now, I don't know how you feel about pre-owned sneakers and all that stuff. It's a thin line. Some people don't mind. They'll clean them up or whatever. Like me, I don't have like a majority of pre-owned sneakers, but some of them I actually pulled the trigger on because the deal was so sweet and the condition of them looked decent. So I clean them up. I don't mind that. Now, the sneaker can't be looking like terrible and completely beat, but the pre-owned sneakers that I get, you would damn near think they were like light new or brand new because I clean them up and all that but it never was so bad to the point that I would have to restore but if you want to get all into that restore thing you can just YouTube it Google it whatever because there's so much information out here now to just get your sneaker game on track that like you'll be flawless so sign up for those rewards though man um, and uh, people is not in these stores really too much combing these clearance racks you still got people that's still trying to flex for the gram and stuff like that and they just trying to get all the hype stuff and you got a bunch of little fucking hype beasts all over the damn internet and the computer but um 2017 a lot of the resale stuff had really like took a dip because a lot of the jays was especially sitting and people kind of felt that wave through the whole industry and you know 2018 was semi more picked up obviously um but reselling kind of made a comeback a little bit last year but like this year, it's a little bit more tapered off and a little bit more dead than the previous years. But yeah, though, man. So sign up for those rewards. A lot of people don't be in store, at least at my, like a lot of people don't hunt like that. I see a lot of regular people at my stores, like the finish line and da, da, da. Those people that go like twice a year or something like that. They might go for the winter boost and they might go for the back to school sneakers or whatever. Then maybe another pair just at a random part of the time, like spring, like now, like where they just like buying like you know the all white shoes or something like that so you ain't got nothing to worry about as far as like physical but like physical stores but um i don't know about your area you might gotta watch out for like hype kicks and all that stuff so that brings me into my third subject my third subject is my third topic under this topic is uh well my third one <laughs> is uh don't buy all the hype kicks and become a hype beast um basically you'll go broke real quick and you know it's basically no fun just having you know you got a few guys that are arguing defense oh yeah you know i take the high quality hype beast sneaker over the regular quantity ones but that's my next topic the fourth one but to finish this one off you don't want to buy too many hype kicks number one you will go broke and number two it's just more fun rotating eight kicks versus just one or two kicks um you can basically keep kicks clean by rotating them. You know what I mean? The less you actually wear kicks, it's the like you're more likely to keep them clean. So that's just always one of the rules. And that's one of the cool things about this whole sneaker stuff is like um you can rotate kicks. Like that's the funnest shit ever to me. Like 
you could just switch from different brands depending on who you are some people just strictly jordan people some people just strictly nike and jordan people some people just strictly adidas people but whatever you are but i like various brands so i'm gonna be all around the board diadora asics adidas nike jordan all of them whoever if the shoe look flying by and i don't care if it's care who or car who with the little um uh, uh kangaroo on it those look fly too um so um pumas uh so it, it's fun to actually switch around and it's better to have a variety of a rotation and stuff man that beast just having those one or two pair of or three pair of little hype kicks and you know they get dirty quick they're gonna get dirty you're gonna get more and more war worn so at the beginning you want to start more building uh, a quantity before the quality and that'll basically bring me into my uh, fourth topic before I leave this one so again don't buy all the hype kicks and become a hype beast because you're not gonna do nothing just gonna get you're just gonna get like bored and really the the foundational part of this uh, is basically getting a quantity of, of sneakers. By all means, make sure you can buy all the kicks, buy the kicks that you actually like, but make sure that you get your quantity up too. You know what I mean? So now that's number four. Quantity over quality, tomato, tomato. You Maybe you might want to focus more on quality after you built up a decent amount of kicks, um, but when you first start now, you're basically looking for quantity. Um, your foundation you want to just start getting more about the numbers um if you feel kind of like lost and you don't know what you want to get uh, most of the time people know what they like i mean but if you you know um want to get like you know like i always suggest like starting off with like the basic stuff that's real easy especially if you're on a budget like chucks vans adidas superstars like the regular classics like reebok classics these are sneakers that you can find for like 50 bucks or less sometimes sometimes 60 bucks at the highest nike cortez uh uh, uh what's those um the nike blazer like regular classic kicks that really never get old like those kicks gonna last forever you know because and they they classic staples like you can't go wrong with them regular people even still got those too um that's basically it as far as quantity over quality though because that was kind of explained in the third one but again you want to build more you want to have more variety and once you have more variety more quantity and you can switch um you can actually do like a proper sneaker rotation 30 kicks 20 kicks and you can almost wear a different uh, pair of kicks for the month then you'll be good to go versus those little two or three hype kicks man i mean to each his own if you want to do that but Again, as long as I've been living, man, you more likely to get them. I don't care if you clean them every night. Eventually, you gonna probably give up cleaning them. You're not going to clean those every night. Um, but you could try. It's a free country, but it's way better on you and your pocket if you get more quantity. So if you get eight pairs of kicks for the price of one expensive hype beast kick, do that. Get those eight kicks. Get those ten kicks, whatever. Get those five kicks, you know, and just leave it at that. But, um, you know, you can start carving your collection out later on once you build it up. So my last topic, my last one, number five, is buy what you like and patience is key. By all means, buy what you like. Don't just buy a kick because it's cheap just to buy it. Um, some kicks are cheap for reasons because typically people didn't want it. So um, that's why I always say be on the hunt, be scraping for that gold because it's easy to find an ugly, undesirable kick for like 20 or 30 bucks that don't nobody like or... You know, so make sure it's something that you like. You know what I mean? Um, some stuff people sleep on or whatever. That's, you know, uh, uh, wait for the deals. Um, patience is definitely key. Those are also, patience is almost damn near more important than just uh, than doing a sneaker hunt. I would say patience is probably number two. Like, sneaker hunting is number one as far as a skill for a sneaker head and patience is number two especially like when you want a budget now if you got hit the lottery blow it you know you could just buy you just you probably don't even need to watch this video if you hit the lottery you could just buy but um if you want a budget like the rest of us though man especially starting out that's why i'm making my business every time i post a sneaker just a little drifting off that's why I always make it my business every time I post a sneaker review. Sometimes to post the price, $60 Air Max 1, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
it's not it don't cost that much to be a sneakerhead no more all like that like it how it used to because a lot of people sleeping on more kicks and they releasing kicks as these companies releasing kicks at such a rapid rate that like you could just jump in really and it's not going to really cost that much because people focus is more different now you got this group of people reselling and then you got some of the people that's trying to keep up with that reselling trying to buy that expensive shit up there like that think they're sneaker heads or whatever and you know they they that's all they think about and buy or whatever and then you got that that little mellow part down here like actual sneaker dudes that just buy a little bit of stuff up here but then buy some gr stuff down here like we just back and forth and that's me um some of the stuff that i like happen to be hype sometimes and then most of the time i'm down there dabbling with some slept on grs or something like that i got all these videos on my channel you can see what i do and all that and last but not least like i said earlier is definitely a buyer's market right now 2019 the market is completely different from the way the climate of it is from the way it was in 2015 and before that i would say the reselling really took off in like since the concourse released in late 2011 all the way up to 2017 so you had roughly six years of just pillaging and raping and reselling crazy throughout all that time that six year period people was like reselling like crazy so now it's kind of like it hit a brick wall and it's a little bit more under control but you still get limited releases here and there and now people like the manufacturers like the sneaker companies or whatever realize a lot of that but even though more though most importantly man have fun don't get wrapped up too much in like this youtube stuff or, or if somebody drama and all that stuff and all that man sneakers originally is supposed to be like a fun thing to do you know what i mean like they're supposed to it's just you know you're supposed to be getting fresh the whole thing uh, uh even about even getting a sneaker collection is to have multiple pairs of different sneakers well to have their various sneakers to get fresh in and actually have fun you know what i mean so like have fun doing the sneaker hunt i'm starting to ramble a little bit and uh yeah that's basically my top five ways or top tips to be a sneaker i know i kind of went on and just to reiterate number one enjoy the hunt number two sign up for sneaker reward programs number three don't buy all hype kicks and become a hype beast or become a hype beast from all that because it's easy to get sucked in a little bit of us got a few hype beast stuff but we already passed the foundation level you still at the foundation level start now so you want to get your shit up here you want to get your sneakers up just find out what you like and don't like me i just say try various kicks because you don't know what you're gonna like until you like it you might like dash shoes more you might like basketball shoes more you might like runners more you never know depending on look and fit too quantity over quality you take your pick a lot starting from the beginning i would choose quantity because you need more rotations to stay fresh and lastly number five buy what you like and patience is key so that's it that's my time closing in on 18 minutes i'm out peace